By God, could it be? It can't be. By God, that's Norwich's music. They're back in the Premier League. Back again. And they're gone. What is good, boys and girls, and welcome to Quackers TV with me, your host, QTV. And this is Sunday QT because I am one. Dean Smith, he has been given the impossible task of keeping Norwich in the Premier League. Norwich known for two things. Relegation and incest. Hopefully we're going to add Champions League football to that as a third thing because that's, that's not the best mixture. But anyway, you're going to see throughout this video, it says Fat Frank in the, in the top left. Um, let's just say um, someone may have jumped the gun. But you look at that team... They've got a star. Short socks, shit hair. Todd Cantwell. We well, you know Dean Smith loves it. Jackie Grealish, Todd Cantwell. Four letters in their first name. Eight in oh their second. And gracious. plus one rating when we make him camp. Boys and girls, this is going to be a good reboot. I can already feel it. Again, Timo Kuki. He is in the transfer. I know it's not going to be a popular one, but... He's actually worth a little bit of money, so I just want him gone. But if you are going to sell players, boys and girls, remember to renew their contract. Max value. Christoph Zimmerman started the Exodus, and many, many players would soon follow, leaving us a tidy budget. Just over 40 million. First signing, the first man in. None other than the man bun madman, the Ukrainian. Unicorn? Yeah, it works. Andre Lunin. I wanted a nice young keeper who could grow with the team. Jaffet Tangang would be second in. Probably my favourite signing this year on FIFA because of the fact he goes up three ratings. Sedia Dean Ketia. Third man in. And finally, we bring one in from within. Brandon Williams already at the club. As I've said previously in other videos, I don't actually like loaning players just because i consider them a negative asset if they're good we're just going to make their value go up if they're bad then the fuck's the point of them as you can see the team is there but there's one more signing and nothing is going to change i'm going to give you a couple seconds to figure out what that could mean before i reveal our final signing once for the crew one more signing that nothing changes in that picture I think it's actually quite obvious, really. We had about 16 million left. I've seen Ozan Kabach grow insanely. And he's only worth 13 now. But he he can go up about four or five ratings in one season. He ends up worth about 30 million. So if I can get him for about 16 now. I mean, even if he doesn't grow as much as I'd hope. Then for sure I can make my money back on him. Just to decide as we go into our first game. If I do sound a bit strange, I have got a ridiculously awful cold and my head is absolutely banging. So I do apologise that I'll, I'll be taking multiple pauses just to cough because I don't want to be obnoxious and make you hear it. But when I play Liverpool, one thing always seems to happen. The man in goal, Alisson, lives up to the last part of his first name and he sons me. He becomes my father. And makes me feel like shit. Christian Zolas though, by the way. 87 potential. Nope. And it doesn't matter because Allison is Allison, And they get it clear. We do come forward again with him though. 87 potential, surely. No. Nope. But what Zolas can't do, Toddy can't well. Surely. Nope. Okay, but this is why we signed. Steady. My man has literally just become a Beyblade in 360 no scope to me. He's literally now called Optic Tiago. I can't actually put in perspective how angry I got during this. This is why I don't do live commentaries, because it will literally just be me swearing for two minutes straight. I've battered Liverpool and lost 3 0. So we know the team can play well. But can they get the results necessary to keep them up? We made five signings in the end. And I think Norwich fans would be absolutely buzzing. I mean, they'd be buzzing to see anything that isn't 18th to 20th place at this point. 
is oh, I've got. A, it's actually hilarious that Newcastle might genuinely be worse than Norwich. Norwich are figuratively and literally the most pointless team in the league, and Newcastle, the richest team in England, now might be worse than them. It's just beautifully poetic, isn't it, lads? But as you can see, the team is growing very, very nicely. Cantwell already up 78. Rashika, Cantwell, and Ketia Zolis. They are what we are banking on. That front four, we are. Fucking hell, Josh Sargent. Fair play, lad. But. The first relegation six pointer. Welcoming Brentford to Carrow Road. Last time out. Let's just say our finishing game made us look about as useful as a eunuch in a brothel. Ref, I'm sorry, ref, that's a foul! Ref! Ref! No, I'm actually... Get that man bunny prick out of my team. I actually can't. I actually can't. My players do this over and over and over and over and over again whilst I'm getting 316 0 scoped. You There's a reason I don't play Cod Vanguard anymore. Well, number one, it's because it's dog shit. But number two is because I don't want to be no-scoped anymore. Oh my god, I scored. <laughs> Yay! Kieran Dow. Don't even know what the point of him is, but we drew 1 1 in the end, which is. I know, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pretty big deal around here at Norris to not lose a game, so I guess we're pretty happy with that. In the end, we did finish 11th in the league, which is a great season. But, you know, it's hard to be happy about it when I get bent over by every team I play against. Well, not, if, not even every team. Mostly just my goalkeeper. I'm, uh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm positive again. I'm back. I'm good. I can't be getting this angry. I've already lost my voice like three times in the last three days. Zolis up six ratings, looking like an absolute beast. Tanganga and Zola is probably my two biggest recommended signings. We had a choice though. We had enough money to sign one big centre mid. In the end, I went with Orkan, Koku, and my game immediately crashed. Which I probably should have taken as a sign not to sign him, but you know, I went through with it. Just gonna say. You might see Curtis Jones appear a couple times in this. He won't be here from the 30th onwards. Basically what happened, I've had to record this twice because some ginger prick saved over my original save file with it where I signed Curtis Jones. So this gameplay is from where Curtis Jones is. Uh -oh. As you can see, making a mistake. Kevin De Bruyne getting sent off two minutes in. Erno Hernandez back from his loan, putting us 1-0 up. I don't beat Man City. I don't. I've gotten battered with my Unreal Nor not Norwich, Unreal Arsenal team multiple times by City. And I beat them with this bang average. Wouldn't get a look at in, in a nightclub. Would get about three matches in two years on Tinder. Three out of ten looking munter. That is my Norwich team. Don't ask me how I did it. It's pointless because somehow we're worse than last season. But yeah, I beat Man City, so you know, that is pretty cool. But it was time. It's time for Dean Smith to come home. The man is a Villa fan born and raised. Well, it's time to put those two bit retrobate bitches in their place. They dead sack old Dino. Well, Christian Zolis would start it. Remember, Villa lost their short sock, shite haircut attacking mid. We still got ours in Toddy Cantwell, and he is going to show just how good he is. Villa, they couldn't get anything going. Easy save, even Loonan could make it. Cantwell with a scorpion kick. Pick that one out. I ain't even going to show you a replay. You know why? Because that is the level of goal you should get used to. Boys and girls, we are feeling good right now. I mean, I'm really not, actually. I feel like my, someone is punching me in the throat every single second. I've already had to pause this recording like 10 times just to cough. But we're 2-0 up. So, figuratively, we're feeling great. 
We get it across to Steady Eddie and Ketia, who gives us a steady 3-0. Aston Villa. You're getting done in by a man you sacked. By a man you threw away. We walked up to our ex and no, she didn't have the beautiful boyfriend who's much better than me for once. She downgraded boys and girls. Yes. 4-0. We won the relationship in the end, and we all know, as a mature man, that is all that matters. We did end up coming Great. But yet again, we had enough money in the bank for one big signing. I'm going to be honest, Brendan Williams, he's a delightful lad. Hadn't really been developing at all. I'd already got the message saying he peaked. Nuno Mensch, Nuno Mendes, whatever you want to say, in my opinion, will be the best left back in the world within the next five years. The guy is absolutely unreal. It's kind of a no-brainer. So, if we've made one sign in last year in Orca and Koku. Nuno Mendes has signed and the game didn't crash, so I'm just going to assume that is an absolutely great sign that he is going to be a beautiful component to this team. I am not going to lie, lads. I am struggling here, so let's see how well this goes. I do apologise in advance. If this commentary isn't my best, I'm doing my best, but genuinely, it sounds like someone's, it feels rather like someone's putting a knife down my throat every second. Boys and girls, though, you can see it. The Wembley Arch, yes! Norwich had finally gotten into a cup final, and not just any. The Carabao Cup final, a cup so prestigious I always say it was once sponsored by Milk. But there would be no early red card for Man City to give us a chance this time. Even if arguably there definitely should have been. Because that was a disgusting tackle you pulled launch ref and he should have been gone. Boys and girls, so we just had to believe. We kept coming, we kept piling on the pressure. But you could see the boys, they were nervy, they were shaking, they were quivering. They were a wreck and the ref with his dodgy decisions. He wasn't helping anything. Thankfully that's the Richarlson. Absolutely bottles it like the bottle job Bellendi is. 88 minutes. 88 I fought for. I hate Man City. I actually hate them. There is no jammier team in FIFA. And I will not have it any other way. No, no, no. Skip this. I don't want to see their celebrations. No one gives a shit about their fucking celebrations. To make things worse. Fifth in the league. Which, oh, no, no, that's great. No, two points off Champions League. The team is good enough for Champions League football now. So I am disappointed in it. I really am. This is just unacceptable for me now, I'm sorry. We're better than this. I mean, just look at the team. Literally one player rated below 83. That team is quality and I've barely signed anyone. Zolis, 88 rated. That man you got look at my bank account. 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 What are you doing? We rich, rich now, boys and girls, and it was time. We lost our cup final. We lost our Champions League football. We couldn't have that happen again. Fourth season now. No more. No more nearlies. No more has beens. No more incest for the Norwich City. Jude Bellingham, Edwin Tapsoberin. Two quality players. Not young players anymore. Players reaching their peak. Boys and girls, that team is looking absolutely filthy. Zola's nearly 90 rated. Tanganga up to 87. We paid 8 million for him. And here we are, Lech Poznan, finally we're going to Europe, finally Brexit no longer means Brexit. Finally I can take advantage of that Irish passport, which to be fair I do on Tinder anyway. It's a very helpful pickup line. But we did discover one thing about Poznan. You may know, they are, called, they are famous for a celebration called the Poznan, which they actually stole off the Scottish team, which if you didn't know. And I always wonder, why do they turn around and jump up in the air? Well, I realise now having played them, I think they're all just a lot of subs who like taking it from behind. 
So they're just showing us, they're just preparing. Because certainly here, we bent them over and took full advantage. And I can only assume it was just their fans highlighting us that that is what was going to happen. Absolutely battering them and comfortably winning four goals to however many goals they may have scored in the end. No one really cares about that though, do they? Do all that matters is we scored four. Boys and girls. After that, we took it all the way to the semi-finals. 3-1 up already. All we need is to not concede two in Rome. And we are through to the Europa League final. And boys and girls, Jose Mourinho, the specialist in failure that he is, he had nothing. He couldn't hold a candle. To us Norfolk boys. And we kind of need this Europa League final. Because we'd massively fucked it this season. Ended up 7th. So it was a. Uh, it was basically our only opportunity. To get in the Champions League you know. And so here we are. Todd Cantwell. Maxi Arads. Milot Rashika. Christian Zolis. Matthias Norman. All still at the club. We let them grow. We let them blossom. And boys and girls. It was time for us to take advantage Atlanta Bergamo Atlanta obviously famously under sea well they are about to be under siege they had the first of opportunities with Anderson Taliska but that's easy for the man bun madman in goal Milot Rashika next beautiful little back who went to Bellingham and said he teases the palms like a good man would Toddy Campbell though hammers it on the spin and immediately scored the 360 goal off of the bar. 47 minutes on the clock. No breakthrough yet, but Eddie and Ketty. Eddie and Ketty like a good Tory would be, is scared of the left. So this smashes the goal as well. And then 71 minutes on the clock. Atalanta take the lead. Dreams over, yet another cup final loss. To a late goal from outside of the area. Or maybe it wasn't. Step forward, step up. Steady, Eddie and Ketia. The beast from North London. We know one thing, that man loves scoring against minnows. All he does is score in cups. And if there wasn't a bigger cup for him to score in, I ain't heard of it. That made no sense, but you know what? I'm in delirium, I think you can leave me alone. Eddie and Ketia, 86 on the clock, gives us a hope, gives us a dream, gives us a reason to be more disappointed. Milot Rashika has just taken that ball from the halfway line, picked up like the fat kid who brought it to the kickabout and wants to go home now, taken it all the way to the area and said, fuck you, my game, my house, my rules. 2-2, two, two. boys and girls, we are back. We have a chance. My throat is absolutely killing me, but we go. Rashika with the cut in now. Finds Adam Ida, who finds Drew Bellingham, and that is why we signed him. Big moments, big players, Jude Bellingham. The Birmingham youth prospect came back to England and he was only going to come back to win trophies. And he has Josh Sargent to wrap it things up. 4-2 to the Norwich boys. We get it done, ladies and gentlemen. The first trophy, and it would have been really nice to celebrate it, but some quick skip somewhere. Whoever the gingerbread recordings is, he deserves a slap for that one. But as you can see, 
We are the winners of the Europa League. We will be playing Champo League football next year. But boys and girls, before we go forward, we all know, right? So let's fact check. We all know something, because we're about to see our budget. Dean Smith's favourite player. Dean Smith famously friends with Mason Mount. I definitely didn't sign Mason Mount here thinking that it was a Fat Frank career mode re-simulation. Definitely didn't do that at all, okay? We can all agree Dean Smith and Mason Mount have a long and storied past. That I'm very aware of. First in the Prem, absolutely battered our group and what was our reward for doing so? <sighs> a cup tie, a first round knockout with Bayern Munich. Yes, after winning six games from six. You clinking, clanking, clattering collection of collisionous junk! Hard agree there, my good friend. We get a tie with Bayern Munich. Fun. Well, at least, you know, at least we get to experience the Alliance Arena. It's a big thing for Norris to play it. EA can't give me anything. EA literally can't do anything, right? We did come forward only 20 minutes on the clock. Rashika whips it back to Toddy Cantwell, edge of the area. Great football. Mason Mount, beauty into the top corner. Hammering it home. No deflections. No defenders were ever going to stop that. What a goal from the young Englishman. Phil Foden, who? The only players better than him that I know are from Real Swift, Ron Bukayo Saka and Charlie Patino. Oh, it's what a shame someone skipped the replay so you can't see just how purely in the top bins that was. Rashika coming forward next. Gives us two. Gives us a pair. Just like I have my balls. The absolute dream is on, boys and girls. The dream is still alive. And it was alive and kicking even more so as Rashika speeds through Cantwell with a delicious pass to Zolas, who squares with Steady Eddie to make it. Why are you booing me? I am Norwich. I don't care if I tramped it. I'm Norwich against Bayern Munich. I'm going to take what I can get. Okay? Thank you. On to the second leg now. Just as easy as the first, to be honest. They, they, they did. They did get a goal Hustle to do. Bye bye. Don't they they the did. Hit you Good effort from the lads. But Steady Eddie, too strong. The man. 86 rated now the guys are beast Valencia up next what a bunny they would we we lost 3-1 to Walt Weghorst and the boys also I just want to apologize for the camera angle throughout this video Carrie Rhodes camera angle is absolutely just terrible in this game but that man just ball rolled me he just dared to ball roll me how fucking Dare you have the tack to do such a thing. Steady Eddie makes it 3-2. Gives us a chance. Gives us a lifeline. And we ain't playing who wants to be a millionaire. We are playing the weakest link. And that right side of Valencia certainly seems like it. Rashika driving forward now. Gets it across to Toddy Cantwell. The homegrown youngster. The absolute... Norwich legend now. Just wait till that Todd from community looking ass bitch wins and lifts the Champions League for us. I'm also really uncomfortable having two players with man buns in this team. So one of Norman or Lunin has to go. And Ketia seals the deal late on 88th minute. Was it ever in doubt though, to be honest? Was it? I think we all knew I was going to get the W here. We all know my real name is CJ. The C stands for clutch. The J stands for justice. They dared to ball on me and embarrass me in front of all of my viewers, all of my friends. Well, the justice had to come. The clutch was just a necessity anyway. 3-0 through to the quarterfinals where we would play Barcelona. A comfortable 2-0 win would put us through. 3-2 on aggregate into... The Champions League final, boys and girls. But before that, we had the formality, the simple matter of lifting the Premier League title. Yes, just five seasons in, Rashika and Mount with the goals to confirm Norwich City, 
perennial relegation, not even candidates. What it would be like, guarantees to Premier League champions. Jaffit Tanganga, 8 million, we signed him for maybe the greatest signing in Premier League history, question mark? Well, he certainly will be if he leads us to a Champions League. Christian Zolis, by the way. I know the whole team's there and it's all pretty admirable. Well, Christian Zolis is just a joke of a player. 93 rated. The guy's just unreal. Champo League final, boys and girls. If it couldn't get better. We get to play Seville. Not PSG. Not Piemonte Calcio, not Real Madrid, not Barca or Bayern, because we kicked those fools out and said hasta la bye bye. Sevilla FC in the Champions League final. Unicel Nesriel, Ezequiel Palacios and the boys. Nico Ovedi against Eddie and Ketty. That's just not even a contest. Putting the burners on. Past him. Couldn't find the pass there. 80 minutes in. But 18 is my lucky number. And my luck. Really felt it was in here. And Ketio whipping it into camp. You How suck. have you missed that? How have you actually missed that? We had to keep going though. Rashika, the man who I actually considered selling before he's Europa League heroics, finds Zolis. And the Greek international puts a spear through the hearts of Sevilla fandom the same way King Leonidas did to Xerxes all those years ago. The man inspired by 300. 300 against millions. Well, that was about the odds we ever had of getting this far. And Christian Zolis, 93 rated. Milot Rashika, 91. They epitomized the growth, the strength in depth, the inner strength we found from within. But if anyone was showing just how far we developed, just earlier in the episode, Todd Cantor bottling the 1 1 against Liverpool in the biggest game we played for us, our first game. Well, he wasn't going to do it again. Toddy Cantwell, the growth on display. We had the support. We backed Aaron's, Zolis, Rashika, Toddy Cantwell. We backed them to take us forward. And that is what they're doing. And Ketty down the wing into Zolis, who can't quite finish. But the damage, it's been done. Sevilla's heads, they're in their hands. Their fans... They were probably throwing bottles from the stands. Zolis can't roll. Well, maybe they can't finish, but they did what they had to. Coming through one last time. 85th minute. If anyone was going to get it done, if anyone was going to put the parting shot, the dagger in, it had to be Dean Smith's B Tech, Jackie Grealish, Todd Cantwell, the man with the shittest haircut in the Prem. Actually, to be fair, probably Douglas Lewis. But he actually got a pretty decent one, to be fair. Boys and girls, there we have it. Norwich City. From the most pointless team in Premier League history to the greatest team in Europe in just five short seasons. Norwich fans, let me know what you think of the appointment of Dean Smith. I, I've seen very mixed reviews. Some people kind of not sure if he's going to be up to the task. Would you prefer someone like Sam Allardyce, who you know would kind of settle the ships, batten down the hatches? Or, you know, Dean Smith, he's an attacking manager, he likes to play some football. Boys and girls, though, you've been a lovely, lovely audience. It has been nothing but my pleasure. I don't know if there'll be a video tomorrow, because as I said, it generally feels like I've got a knife down my throat. But for now, peace.